Lord, this little light, I'm going to let it, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it, let it shine, let it shine. Somebody say, now listen, now, no, no, no. Everywhere I go, you know. Hey, hey, everywhere I go, I'm going to let it. Everywhere I go, I'm going to let it. Let it shine. Somebody said, now, listen now, all in my home, you know. I'm going to let it. Look at you now, you know all. I'm going to let it. Let it shine. Somebody said now, listen now, glory, glory, you know, hallelujah, oh, glory, glory, hallelujah, glory, glory, hallelujah. Since I laid my burden, oh, I feel better, mm -hmm. so much better. Since I laid, laid my burden, I feel better. So much better since I laid my burden down. Let your church say amen. Isn't God good? He woke you up this morning, didn't he? Started you on your way. I feel good. I feel good. Oh, I feel good. I feel good. Let us pray. Eternal and everlasting Father, you've been better to us than we, we've been to ourselves. And you look beyond all of our faults and you saw our needs. And early this morning, before our eyes were open, you breathed into us the breath of life. And we, be, we became a living soul. And for that, we say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I know you specialize in all of our situations. And Lord, if there are anybody here this morning need a special blessing, let them look to you from whence come out all of their help. And Lord, we ask for the anointing of your Holy Spirit, the one that will proclaim your good news. Oh, touch him, Lord. Give him knowledge and wisdom and the strength, Lord, to preach your word. Keep us, Jesus. In your name we pray. Let the church say amen. amen. Say it again. Said again, God is good all the time, isn't he? All the time. Tequila. Come on, Tequila. Come on up here. Come on, Tequila. Be ye also ready. For you know not the hour nor the day. Oh, she just walked in and I told her grandmother and aunt there's 
tell her she's got to do something today. You all right, Takia? Okay. Come on up here. I ask you to stand, please. Oh, okay. Yeah. I read the black, you read the red. <sighs> but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our inequities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned and the Lord has laid on him the iniquities of the earth. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. He was taken to the prison for judgment. Who shall declare his generation? He was cut off from the land of the living, for the transgression of my people. And he, made and he made his grave with the wicked, the wicked and, and with the with rich, rich in his death, death because, because he, he had done no violence, violence neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yeah. Sister Beverly, while we got you standing, come on up here. Come on. It feels so sweet to trust in Jesus. seated. Thank you. At this time, we have any one visit to us for the very first time. Would you please stand and identify yourself? Anyone? 
the first time. Well, if not, then the pastors, members of Dover Christian Church would like to welcome all of you here this morning. Thank you for coming. We hope and trust that something will be said and done today may lift your spirit. Thank you. Thank you again. We have a long prayer list this morning, so we like to pray for Sister Evelyn Kelly. Keep her lifted up in your prayers. Tracy Thomas wants us to pray for all people who are fighting depression, anxiety, PTSD, and any other mental health issues. Please also pray for our children here in the United States and all over the world. Thank you, Sister Tracy. Brother Seton and Sister Seton want us to pray for the Uvalde, Texas, the shooting victims and the family members and continue to pray for the 19 children, two adults teachers who lost their lives, but also the surrounding communities. F.A. William wants us to play for her, her sister Nilda in the Philippines. She also wants us to pray for her daughter-in-law Susan to improve her current chronic nerve condition. Brother Kevin Williams wants us to pray for his brother Kenneth Give the everyday strength to him to support his family. Brother and Sister Barras want us to pray for Ola McNeil, Johnny Barras, Felicia Barras, Janet Wilson for help and for strength. We also like to pray for Sister Elaine Evans for healing. That's one of my neighbors. Sister Yvonne Cheatham also for healings. For Miss Lucy, great grandson, Butcher, for healing. Sister Yvette Russell, for strength. Sister Janet Hudson, healing. Brother Robert Reed, for healing. And the William and the Wilson family, for Rima, they lost him. His funeral yesterday, he had been in Calvary for many, many years. And then we'd like to go all the way to Florida for Sister Sheila. Jeffers, and she, what is that word? Oncologist. Okay. So all of those individually like to lift up in prayer. And Sister Beverly, would you come and lead us on prayer, prayer him? Would you like to? Oh, Claudine, I'm sorry. Oh, my mind is gone this morning. Claudine, I'm sorry. Hmm. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Claudine. Claudine Brother Gordon. On Friday. Okay, Brother Gordon, uh, operation is coming Friday. Gordon, operation. Yeah. It's going to yeah. be Friday. Friday. We don't know the time yet. Yes, ma'am. Okay, Claudine, three hours prayer.
Amen. Good morning, church. It is so good to have folks here this morning. It's so good to see my frat brother here, brother Williams. God bless you. God bless you, sir. Uh, Tony Williams, correct? Anthony. Anthony. I knew it was Tony. Oh, I'm so sorry. Please stand up and introduce yourself, sir, so I can quit messing it up. Alpha Phi Alpha Incorporated. Go ahead, sir. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. And before I get into our prayer, I want to uh, once again ask you to go to your newsletters and to look at the page um, where there is, we have IMA Refueled. The speaker will be Bishop Brenton Hall of Toledo, Ohio. It is a one-day revival, one-day revival. It will be on the 17th of November at 7 p.m. at Union. Uh, you all are invited. And I can tell you, those bishops are some powerful, powerful preachers. And I guarantee you will enjoy yourself. So not only come to be filled up, but come ready to write a check. Because as you know, because of COVID, uh, the IMA has not been able to do their uh, Lenten services. So we have to sort of make up the differences because when wintertime come along, there's going to be some folks who have to pay their heat bills, their electric bills, their rent, and IMA is vital in giving that. And we get our resources from the meetings. So uh, this one meeting, which is called IMA Refueled, literally means that we want to try to earn back a portion of that money. And, I have faith that we can do it. Uh, Reverend Marshall has been working very, very hard to uh, see that this program is successful. And uh, there's no doubt in my ex-military mind that it will be successful because everything Reverend Marshall touches tend to be gold. So uh, you all come out as Dover Christian Church and support us. We're talking about a one-day revival, one day. So you have one time to come, and that is June the 17th. 2000 is in your newsletter. All right, so we have quite a few prayers. Let us, um, June, I said June, didn't I? I said June, it's in, read your newsletter. It's in June. We apologize for nothing, read the newsletter. June 17th, we don't apologize. No, no, come on now. June, just like it said. Even though I said July. All right. A little humor. Okay. God bless you. God bless you. And we're just so thankful to have our great pastor here. We know he's going to do an excellent job in delivering the word. But uh, let us jump. And I added to the list Brother John Priestley. He had a successful knee surgery, although I tell you from experience, he's going through some pain. He's going through some pain. And, uh, you know. Just just pray for the priestly family. They would be here if they were able to. And, of course, we're going to remember uh, serenity. Grandma, amen. God bless you. Okay, let us pray. Heavenly Father, once again, we come to you in prayer, thanking you for all that you've given us, dear God. And thank you, dear God, for you being God all by yourself. All by yourself, dear God. First and foremost, dear God, I pray for this worship service that we will conduct ourselves in a way, dear God, which is appropriate and fitting to you. Yes. Be with our beloved pastor, dear God, who's going to deliver the word. Give him a ready recollection of the word. Yes. And let somebody out there hear it and know, dear God, that you are God all by yourself. That it'll cause them to either make a new commitment or to make a commitment to you, Jesus Christ, our Lord, at the end of our service. We also pray for those who are looking for a church home today, dear God. Once again, dear God, we know that our pastor here was going to provide an excellent environment where folks will lead to the salvation by calculation, CD, whatever that thing is, but 
that calculation that leads to salvation. You know, Lord God, and, and, and you know his heart is good. So, so let somebody make a commitment in the name of Jesus. So, no, Lord, we, we have many, many prayers to lift up, but I pray for the war, dear God, that's going on in Ukraine, that country that was overrun by a fascist aggressor. Dear God, in the name of Jesus, dear God, I pray for hate all over the world. And, I, they, you know, they may be fighting for themselves, but they're also fighting for us. They're fighting for the principles of democracy, and I pray for democracy in this country, dear God. Because even though we're fighting for democracy, we have a single group of individuals who are trying to take away our right to vote based upon artificial barriers that they have made. Well, it's not artificial, it's based on race. And we just pray, dear God, that that plague which is basically overtaking our country will one day be solved in the name of Jesus. So Lord, we lift up the, the prayer for Elaine, Evans, dear God, Elder, Elder Sanders' neighbor, lift him up in the name of Jesus. For Yvonne Cheatham, for Bucci, for Sister Yvette Russell, dear God, for Janet Hudson, for Robert Reed, healing for all of these folks, dear God. For the Wilson family who are going through a bereavement, dear God. I pray likewise for the family of Bishop Lewis, dear God, who went on to be with the Lord, dear God. I pray that you'll bless him in the name of Jesus, dear God. I pray you'll go down to Florida and you'll be with our sister Sheila Jeffords, dear God, who has seen an oncologist, dear God, so there's possibly cancer that's going on in her life. So continue to bless her in the name of Jesus, dear God. I pray, dear God, for traveling mercies for Reverend Marshall, dear God. Keep her safe out there on the highways in the name of Jesus, dear God. For our own brother Walter Gordon, dear God, who's going to undergo surgery shortly. In the name of Jesus, dear God. Continue to bless us, dear God. Bless him, dear God, and be with the surgeon, dear God, who's going to do the surgery. To relieve, perhaps, pressure on his back. I pray, dear God, for Sister Audrey Givens, dear God. Bless her in the name of Jesus. It's so good, dear God, to see these beautiful children here. Serenity, dear God. Bless her, dear God, in the name of Jesus, dear God. Be with John Priestley, dear God, as he recovers from his surgery, dear God. And I think that we even have means to replace these joints. Because years ago, this would not have even been possible. Dear God, I pray that you will bless uh, Sister Tracy, uh, all the people who are dealing with anxiety, as well as PTSD, and that which I am personally acquainted with, continue to bless them in the name of Jesus. For Sister Evelyn Kelly, we keep her lifted up in prayer as well as brothers, uh, uh, o the O'Neill family, John Byers, Felicia Byers, yeah. Janice Wilson, health and strength to them. Yeah. For brother Kenneth, give him everyday strength yeah. to support his family, dear God. Bless sister William's family, her daughter-in-law, Susan, to improve her current chronic nervous condition, yeah. dear God. Be with uh, the folks who suffered that terrible tragedy down in Texas, dear God where teachers as well as students were killed. Yeah. And let us, dear God, be as a country, not only realizing how precious the right to vote is, but realizing the other stupidity of allowing guns to go into the hands of people that are unstable. So we rebuke not only them, but we rebuke all of the, 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 the NRA as well as the, 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 the spineless politicians who refuse to take a stand on evil on evil, dear God. Finally, Lord, I pray that you'll lift up Nilda in the Philippines, Sister Effie Williams' sister, dear God. We know, dear God, that you're able. Strengthen and keep us. Strengthen and keep us, dear God, in the name of Jesus. And once again, dear God, I pray for our pastor. Give him a word, dear God, to give us all. Give him a word to give us all. We pray and we give, lift up all of these uh, supplications and words of thanksgiving and, 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 and just continue to bless us as we pray the prayer that was asked by the disciples when he asked Lord how can I pray our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Elder Sanders, it's giving time. Eternal Father, we ask that thou would bless the offering that we are about to receive. Let it be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom here on earth. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. We would ask you to stand please and follow the directions of the ushers and Sister Beverly. It's time for you. And I started giving to God. Let us all sing. <laughs> I started living when I started giving to God. I started living when I started giving to God. If you give unto Him, He will give it back to you. Bless you. Well, this time last Sunday, the next gentleman coming up was down in Tennessee. But you see what God has done for him, brought him back to Delaware. Hunter? Yes, sir. Are you all right now, son? I'm good. Come on up here then. Alrighty. Good morning, everybody. Yeah, I'm fresh from Tennessee. <laughs> uh, this has been a great week for me because, you know, my, uh, you know, my kids have really taught me something about the meaning of blessings. I mean, it's amazing how the little folks 
you know, they get with you and they can convict you and help you understand blessings, even though, even though a hard side like the granddaddy, you know, and um, uh, my, 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 my grandson Troy and I, we always, we always get into situations and for some reason, well, we always learn something for God blesses us in that way, you know, and, and, and I don't know if y'all noticed, but of late, uh, there's a lot of folks out there at the traffic lights, stop lights, stop signs, with signs asking for help. A lot of folks. I mean, every time you come to a, 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 a traffic light, there's somebody out there asking us for help. You know, and what's scary about it is that a, a, a country that is powerful as ours, as wealthy as ours, we got our people asking on the streets for help. And so that should convict us as Christians to do something about it. Amen. You know, I, you know, Troy and I, we ride around a lot. And uh, so we're riding around. And you know that VFW highway that cuts across uh, uh, you know, from one side of Dover to the other, the new highway. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and Troy and I, we travel that back and forth a lot because he goes to basketball games and doctor's visits. So we back and forth, of course, there a lot. And so we come to the, we come to the end on Do at Dover, over on 13, and there's somebody there with a sign. And I said, oh, my Lord. And so I put my hand, I, I open my glove box, and I says, man, I only got, I only got $2 in, in, in there. You know, I said, but I put my hand in the glove box, and I take out $1, and um, I give it to the gentleman that's on the, on, at, at, at the end. And then I said, and, 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 you, and, and the thing about it is going back and forth, this thing's starting to turn, turn into like a toll. Ain't it? It's like a toll. It's like, you, it's like you're riding Route 1. Because at the other end, there's somebody in need at the other side. So my son, so, so he said, Dad, you didn't give him the $2. I said, no, Troy, because there's going to be somebody at the end of that thing that's going to need a dollar. And we get to the end, and sure enough, there it is. I put down my window, give the guy the other dollar. Now we ain't got no more money. You know, so Troy says, Daddy, do you think that they all really need that money? Do you think that those people out there really need that money, Daddy? And I said, Troy, you know what? Not everybody out there might need the money, but somebody out there needs that money. So you got to do God's will. You got to give as, your, as God sees fit for you to do because you give. And somebody out there, no matter how, somebody's going to need that money. So you make sure you do God's will. You make sure you do what's right. You make sure you reach in and do what God tells you to do. And uh, naturally, Troy and I get into another situation. We're on Route 10 over by the Air Force Base, the Wawa. And we get to the Wawa, and we pull in, we pull in. You know, because Troy's got, Troy's got to get his, 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 his power drink and his pretzels. So we're going to get that. And as we get out the car, a lady rolls up to us. She's driving a nice Mercedes-Benz SUV. And she pulls up alongside of us. And she rolls down the window. And let me tell you something. I never seen so much gold in my life. <laughs> she had gold teeth, gold bracelets, gold rings, gold necklaces, gold. And she, runs, she comes alongside me. She says, sir. We need some gas. And I said, and then I said, you need gas? And then she takes my, and I said, she's rocking a bend. She's like Brother Seton. <laughs> Sorry, Brother Seton, called you out. <laughs> but, but she takes my, I said, I said, she takes my hand and she puts a gold ring in my hand. A gold ring. And she says, take this ring and give us some gas. And I was like, mm, wow, you know, I says, here, you take the ring. You take the ring, but you know what? I'm going to get you some gas. I'm going to go inside, get my credit card, and I'm going to get you some gas. Well, and then she said to me, she said, well, how much gas are you going to get me? And I said, well, Capital One's telling me I'm going to give you $20. <laughs> and so she says, but I need more. I need to get to Massachusetts. And I said, I said, well, here's your ring. I said, here's your ring. I'm going to go in there. I'm going to get you the gas. Do you want the gas? And she says, I need more than that. And I said, I said to myself, I said, you know, she says, you know what? She says, you know, I've got lots of gold. I'm a Muslim. She says she's a Muslim. She's got lots of gold. I don't know what that's got to do with being a Muslim, but she says she's got lots of gold. 
And I said, I can see in your smile you got lots of gold. <laughs> and I said to her, I said, you know what? Well, I'm a Christian. And I'm a Christian minister of a Dover Christian church. And the Lord tells me to give you $20 worth of gas at the pump. And you know what? She took the ring and drove off. And, and, and Troy said to me, she said, Daddy, I thought you were going to just give her as much gas as she want. And I said, I said, you know what, Troy, the thing is, the thing about blessings is, is that when you bless somebody, they need to be grateful for that blessing. When you, when you reach out and you say you, somebody needs something, they need to be thankful for that blessing. See, because they didn't reject me. She didn't reject Charles Hunter. She rejected the Lord because the Lord told me to give her that gas. And who knows? Who knows? Maybe she would have got to the next gas station and got a bigger blessing. We got to watch when God blesses us. Blessings, big and small, they all come from the Lord. They're all meant for your good. Watch your blessings. Watch who's blessing you. Because you know what? When you reject the blessing, you're rejecting what the Lord has sent for you. I was reading uh, Samuel this week. 1 Samuel 8, 7 to 8. It says, And the Lord said to Samuel, Obey the voice of the people in all that they say to you. For they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me from being king over them according to all the deeds that they have done. From the day I brought them up out of Egypt, even this day forsaking me and serving their gods, so they also do, do to you. I love this passage because the, is this, cause, cause, cause the Israelites were looking for a king. They were looking for a king. They were looking for more. And they forgot the blessings that God had given to them. The small blessings. The blessings that got them on their way. The blessings that led them to the land of milk and honey. They did not remember the blessings that God gave to them. And we've got to be careful. We've got to remember those blessings that God has given to us. Big and small. I was reading a commentary which was, which was interesting. It said, uh, we see how sadly possible it is for man to exercise his perfect free will and mar the glorious work arranged for him by his God. Because we're looking for that big blessing instead of thanking God for the little ones that get you on your way to get you to that next blessing. Now I'm going to do a little bragging. My daughter Lily was up for an a, 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 a internship uh, for cybersecurity at the National Institute of Health. That, it was an unpaid internship. We were going to have to get her an apartment. We are going to have to give her food. We are going to have to get her transportation. And so we so prayed hard to the Lord for her to get that internship at NIH. And they turned it down. They turned it down and it hurt my heart. You know when your children hurt, it hurts your heart. But I said, Lily, don't worry. God has got a blessing for you. And one of the deans at Dell State heard about how hard this young lady was working to get an internship for the summer. They don't usually stand up for kids, for sophomores. They usually do this for seniors or graduate students. And he said, I'm going to get you. I want you to apply for this job at, the ten at, at Tennessee State University, Knoxville, graduate school. It wasn't in cybersecurity. The internship was in autonomous, autonomous Vehicle engineering. Out of, her, out, of her, out, of her, out of her league. She hadn't done it. But she got that internship. God is good. Because let me tell you something. When God tells you no, there's a yes in the mix. When you get that small blessing, the big one is coming. When God tells you no, he got something more for you. They paid for Lily to get out to Knoxville, Tennessee. They paid for my hotel room and my gas. They paying for Lily's apartment. Lily's getting, a, Lily's getting a stipend for her food. And she's getting paid for her research in that program. Blessings running over. 
small blessings lead to big blessings. Yeah. Brothers and sisters, remember that small blessing, that one thing that God sent for you. Even if God tells you no, he's got a yes in the mix for you. Remember the blessings, small and large. Remember who sent the person to bless you. And you make sure that you tell Lord, thank you, Lord. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for what you've done for me today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Blessings small and large. Even when God tells you no, he's got a yes, a yes blessing in the mix for you. Have a blessed week. It is time for communion service. Here at Dover Christian Church, we have an open communion. I mean, anyone desiring to partake of the bread and the wine, you may do also. We will serve you, so we ask that you hold your elements until all have been served, and we will all eat and drink together. I would just like to share a couple of verses from 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, beginning at verse 23. It says, For I have received of the Lord that which I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had blessed it, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. And he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and, and they all drank of it. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. We ask to We, as we take of the bread, let us know that Jesus is the bread of life. He, he nourishes our soul. He provides substance for us to run the race before us. Now, let us eat this bread in remembrance that Jesus Christ died for us all. Take and eat the bread. The fruit of the vine represents the blood that was shed on the cross. The blood that finally gives us salvation. The blood that finally gives us forgiveness. So let us at this time drink of the fruit of the vine which represents the blood of Christ that was shed on the cross. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. We're going to now have the reading of the litany. I'll read the black and you can read the red. We thank you, Lord, Lord God, that you have fed us with these holy mysteries of the body and the blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Help us to be distributors of your blessings, the agents of your providence, the instruments of your grace, the ambassadors of your love to all the people we meet in our everyday lives. We thank you for this, the medicine of immortality the antidote to death.
together. You are one God, now and forever. Amen. Deacon Bolden, if he would come and read our scripture this morning, which is taken from 2 Kings, the 20th chapter, verses 1 through 7. And after that, we have the somatic hymn by Brother Cunningham. And then our pastor, our pastor, will come forward and proclaim the good news of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And I like the title of his sermon, God is not through. There's more work to do. Yes, sir. Say that again, all of us together, God is not through. There is more work to do. God bless you. Thank you. Brother Truman. Second King, chapter 20, verses 1 through 7. In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. And the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amar, came to him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Set thy house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Then he turned his face to the wall and prayed unto the Lord, saying, I beseech thee, O Lord, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart, and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. And, he came, and it came to pass, afore Isaiah was, go, was gone out into the middle court, that the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Turn again and tell Hezekiah, the captain of my people, Thus says the Lord, the God of David thy father, I have heard thy prayer, I have seen thy tears, behold, I will heal thee. On the third day thou shalt go up unto the house of the Lord, and I will add unto thy days fifteen years, and I will deliver thee in this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria. And I will defend the city of mine own sake, and for my servant David's sake. And Isaiah said, Take a lump of figs. And they took and laid it on the wall, and he recovered. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearers and the doers of his word. I don't usually uh, speak too much before I play, but um, this song has been on my heart for, I'd say, the past week and a half. Um, I have a saying I try to live by, which is um, that God will never put more on you than you can bear, but other people will. <laughs> um, and even that, that also includes yourself. Sometimes we put more on ourselves than we can bear. Um, and so this song has a lyric in it that you all will recognize. Um, it has a lyric that says, oh, what peace we often forfeit. Uh, oh, what needless pain we bear. When we do not carry everything to the Lord in prayer. Um, so this song is what, we, what a friend we have in Jesus. And I just want to encourage somebody today uh, that whatever you feel like you can't handle, you have a friend in Jesus you can give it to. So I hope this encourages you today. Oh. Uh -huh. 
Come on, you can do better than that. Come on, let's give God a praise in this house today. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I'm glad God is my friend. Sticks closer to you than a brother. In the midnight hour when you need somebody to talk to. All those other folk you want to call on are sleeping are all over the place. But if you get on your knees and just call on the name of Jesus, he's a friend like no other. Anybody know what I'm talking about? God is good. God is good. All the time. That's right. You know, I want to do a quick commercial announcement before I go into my service. Let me knock this out the way. We got these beautiful Dover Christian Church DC Squared shirts. They're being sold at the Dover Christian Church. If you're interested, please stop by and see me. We're going to sell these church shirts for $20, and $5 will go back directly to the church. Amen. So we want y'all walking around the community letting know who, folk who D.C. Square is. Amen. God is good. He's a friend like no other. Amen. And I want to thank the church. I give you praise for the beautiful robe I'm wearing today. This was the gift you gave me as part of my installation. Glad my wife not here, because she would have said, why didn't you press it? <laughs> I love God. I don't know if anybody else in here does, but I know I love the Lord. God has been so good to me. And I give God praise for DC Squares, the computation that leads to salvation. It's good to be alive, to give God praise. You can't take any breath for granted. You slept through the night, it wasn't your alarm clock that woke you up this morning. It was God's grace and his mercy. And you should give God praise. You shouldn't wait for somebody to tell you to praise God. You got a reason to praise the Lord. Amen. So there's a word that God wants to say. So before we go any further, let us pray. 
Almighty and eternal God, we thank you, Lord, for letting us see the beauty of the sunshine of this day. For this is indeed the day that you have made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you, God, that you allow me to come in this sacred pulpit to speak, God, as one of your ambassadors. So let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. For you're my strength and my redeemer. I ask all this by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. Somebody give Brother Brian Cunningham another hand for the beauty. Well, you know, um, I want to speak to you from the subject, God is not through. There's still more work to do. Some Christians find themselves saying all the time, God's not through with me yet. When they are still exhibiting some of the habits and things that we used to do before we came to church. Y'all going to get quiet on me now. And we say God's not done yet. Well, I'm going to tell you something about your life. Until God is through, there's more work to do. You know, it fascinates me. When I look on the news or TV and I see these natural disasters, these catastrophic tragedies that come to people. And you know, in all of those situations, it seems like somebody's always spared. You know, you, for instance, when you think of looking at footage of an E4 tornado, have you ever seen this? A whole community gets destroyed. But there's always one or two houses that are standing there. Like the storm never came. I mean, all the houses are rubble and nothing's there. But then your neighbor right next to you, house is still standing. It's amazing. It's a phenomenon. Even with earthquakes, they destroy the whole town. But they have the same type of results. Some people just don't get impacted by them. And you may remember this. In 2021 in Surfside, Florida, at the Champlain Towers, through the night, yes, those towers collapsed. Yes, yes, yes. 98 people lost their lives. Yes, and there was a gentleman out there that night. He was walking his dog. Come on, come on. And when he heard the sound of the collapse, he thought it was thunder. Uh -huh. Anybody been to Florida? No, it's always raining down there. <laughs> and he felt the ground shake. Uh -huh. And he thought that this was just the weather, but... Then he felt it again. He took his dog inside the house and he came out to investigate. And when he looked back at those towers, they had crumbled to rumble. He was wearing sandals, so he wanted to go and explore more, but he couldn't really do it. But when he walked close to the disaster, he could hear the voice of a young man crying out, help me, save me. When the first responders and the firemen showed up, they walked up and they saw the young man sticking his arm through the rubble, saying, don't leave me, please help me. And they were able to pull him from out of that disaster. His name was Jonah Handler. He almost came out of that situation unscathed. His mother was with him, but his mother didn't make it along with those other 97 people. And I'm sure that there are days when we might ask God, why am I still here? I'm sure that young man would say, why did God spare me and everybody else perish? And my response to that question is, God is not through because there's still work to do. You cannot escape life's irreducible common denominator. It's something that comes to everybody now. I don't care if you're rich or poor, black or white, Asian or Hispanic, you know, we as Christians say we want to go to heaven, but don't nobody want to die to go there, but you got to die to go there. Everybody get quiet on that. I love heaven. I can't wait to get to heaven, but spare me, God. <laughs> Let me find another route, but it's the irreducible common denominator called death that we've all got to go through, and no matter what, as it's stated in Ecclesiastes, Three, one through two, it says this. There's a time for everything and a season for every activity under the sun. A time to be born. Go ahead, say it, and a time to die. 
time to die. But you know, my beloved family, until you have done God's work that he's birthed you to do, come on, come on. you will stay here yeah. until the task is through. Uh -huh. I know it's hard to believe that sometimes. Well. And that is what we see in the reflection of the scripture today. Well. Hezekiah was one of the few kings of Judah yeah. who was constantly aware of God's acts well, yeah. in the past, and he was deeply involved every day in true worship of God. The Bible describes Hezekiah as a king who had a close relationship with God and one who did good and right and was faithful to the Lord. Now you got to get this. Hezekiah's father was King Ahaz and he was wicked. He built idols. He totally disregarded everything about God. But his son broke that curse and decided to follow God. And Hezekiah knew that he wanted to clean up God's house. Yeah. And so, no matter what his predecessor did, oh, Hezekiah began to do things like tear down the altars, yeah. get rid of the idols. Yeah. He destroyed things that were not according to the will of God. Yeah. And the temple doors that had been closed by Ahaz yeah. were now opened back up and for business. Well, the church was doing what it was supposed to do. Yeah. And the Levitical priesthood was reinstated. The Passover came back, reinstituted as a national holiday. And revival came back to Judah. And because King Hezekiah put God first. Everybody say, put God first. That's faith, remember? Faith first is God. Everything he did, he prospered. Hezekiah held fast to the Lord. And he did not stop carrying out God's commands that were given to him by his great servant Moses. And the Lord was with him. He was successful in whatever he did. Later in life, though, Hezekiah got sick. So sick that the prophet Isaiah came to his house and said, get your house in order because you are about to die. And Hezekiah knew his relationship with God, began to besiege God. And say, God, you got to remember what I did for you. Yes. You know, we do that sometimes when we're going through. Yes. Wait a minute, God, why am I dealing with this illness? Why am I going through what I'm going through? Yes. But God, I've been faithful to you. And I want somebody out there to know that God hears when you cry out to him. Yes. Amen. Yes. Hezekiah prayed to God. Yes. And I like how the scripture says, before Isaiah left the house, yes. God told Isaiah that Hezekiah's prayer had been heard, it had been answered, and he extended that man's life another 15 years. I want somebody in here to get this. Don't you miss it. You stay loyal to God. You stay faithful to God. And no matter what's going on in this world, my brothers and sisters, until the work of God in you is through, God going to keep you. He's going to keep you right here. You know, I saw this. With Hezekiah, you would think that God gave him those 15 years because he was a good man and that he was loyal. But there was a reason God kept him there. Second Kings 2, 6 says this. I will add 15 years to your life and I will deliver you and the city from the hand of king of Assyria. And I will defend this city for my sake and for the sake of my servant David. Yes, he had work to do. They were up against a mighty battle with the Assyrians. And God extended his life because he was going to see that Hezekiah was going to be the one that was going to see him through. And when he faced all these challenges, God heard his prayer and extended his life. And you see, my brothers and sisters, God has been faithful to those who follow him. Each of us in this room today yeah. was born with a divine purpose. Yeah. You did not come in this world by accident. Yeah. God brought you here for a reason. Philippians 2, 12 through 13 says this. Uh -huh. Therefore, my friends, mm -hmm. as you have always obeyed, well. not only in my presence, mm -hmm. but now much more in my absence, yeah. continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Yes, for it is God who works in you to do his will and to act in order to fulfill God's good purpose. 
There's a good purpose in each and every one of us. God didn't just bring you here. He expects you to do what he birthed to do at the end of it all. God expects to be glorified through your life. Amen. Hallelujah. And life is not based on how long you live, my brothers and sisters, but it's based on how well you live. And we were born to bring glory to God. And that could be seen in a way. You, 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 I'm, I'm telling you, and I always say this in a, at some of my points. When you bring in glory to God, that should be seen in the way that you walk, in the way you talk, in the way you treat one another, in the way you encourage one another. That's what God expects us as his children to walk in the ways of God. And so in order to be able to do that, there's some things God expects from us. And I just want to break some of those down for you. First, God expects us to become a disciple of Jesus Christ. Matthew 7, 21 says this. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But the one who does the will of my father is in heaven. And what that means, my brothers and sisters, is that we should be imitating the life and the teachings of Jesus Christ. Many people call themselves Christians, but do not actively follow Christ. They act like church is just something that's traditional. I'm just going to go to church because everybody goes to church. You're supposed to go to church on Sunday. But it is more than just an experience. It is actually a lifestyle. And it's something that we should be living with every day. We are created to obey God and to make him Lord of our life. Second is this. We should share our testimony. Yes, sir. The Bible says this in regards to your testimony in Romans 12, 11. It says, and they have conquered him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. For they love not their lives even unto death. You see, when we experience something in life, brothers and sisters, and a number of us go through all types of things that are life changing. And as believers, we need to share that with somebody. I had a good friend of mine the other day. She said, I got a friend, Reverend Moore, who's getting ready to have a certain procedure in her heart. And I wanted to call you because I think that you had something similar and you'd be an encouragement to her. And that's exactly what I wanted to be. I wanted to give her peace, let her know that everything's going to be all right. And I wanted to share my testimony. And that's important. Many people themselves as Christians do not actively do these things. But we got to encourage one another. There's some of us in here in this church that have experienced some things that people are going through right now. You know, my, my sister called me this morning before I was coming to church, mm-hmm. talking about my nephew, well. dealing with some things that she said I dealt with. Well. I was like, don't get too deep in my business, girl. But she said, I'm, you, you know, he's going through some of those same things, and I can't tell him nothing. But because you've experienced it, and you've gone through it as a man, well. you can talk to him, and you can change his ways. Yeah. And that's what we must do. And then... Another thing is we got to fulfill what God has called us to do. Ephesians 2.10 says this, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk with them. God created us with this great purpose, and we have a specific calling on our lives. God has an area, even in this church, where he has planted you in order for you to help this Church, go to the next level. He wants to influence people with the gifts that you have. Some of y'all out there got so much talent. I know some of y'all out there can sing. And y'all just sitting back there. Some of y'all out there know mathematics to do the finances in this church better than anybody else. But you know, you say, I do it all week long. I ain't doing it on Sunday. But you got gifts. And the gifts that you have need to be used to help God's kingdom go forward. God wants us to be a church that accomplishes a lot. He knew exactly who you are, what you were supposed to be doing, even before he formed you in your mother's womb. So we got to find out what God called us for. And once we know our purpose, we got to give it with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Everything should be done for the glory of God. Amen. Hallelujah. And we also are commanded, listen to me, we're also commanded to forgive those who hurt us. Yes, sir. This is a tough one right here. Yes, sir. Matthew 6, 14 through 15 says this. Many of you know this scripture. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. 
But if you do not forgive others of their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. That's a tough one. You know, don't end your day, my brothers and sisters, with unforgiveness and bitterness in your heart. But extend forgiveness and receive a healing of peace. Now, that's not always easy. Somebody like me who come from the city, when you do me wrong, we used to have a different type of tactic. And it wasn't forgiveness. It was called revenge. And here's the problem we see in society today. We got a lot of vengeful people out here. Last night in Philadelphia and South Street, they had a mass shooting. Three people lost their lives. The, the biggest concern that the police have right now is revenge. Somebody coming back and trying to make up for what they lost. But even in our lowest and agonizing moments, I think about Jesus on the cross. Do you remember Jesus on the cross? Yeah. How he suffered? Oh. How he was trying to just pull himself up because of the pain and the yeah. suffering and all the things that he was dealing with. And as he looked out in a crowd of people Woo. who cursed him, yeah. who called him oh. a son of the devil, yeah. who beat him, yeah. and who called him a blasphemer. Yeah. Jesus himself looked at them and said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. I remember hearing a woman not the, just the other day who was victimized by the Buffalo shooting. And she was talking to a reporter, and a reporter said, well, how do you feel about this shooter taking away your relative? And she said, I forgive him. I forgive him. And I'm even sitting there at the news looking at this as a man of God saying, what? You forgive him. And, a, and, then, a, and then a reporter said, well, why do you forgive him? And she simply said, because I'm a Christian. And we're supposed to forgive. That's not going to say that that person doesn't get their just due. The law will take care of itself. But as individuals, we got to be forgiving people. And the final thing, my brothers and sisters, is that we also got to be generous and sacrificial. Yes, sir. 2 Corinthians 9, 7 says this. Each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Yes, God is so generous to us and so gracious. Can I get a witness to that? Yes, He's a good God. Giving is the will that each of us should have of fulfilling our lives to do what God calls us to do. God commands us to bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in his house. And then he says this, and I'm a living witness to it. I know when I first start coming to church, I was tight on my wallet. Amen? Some of y'all looking at me like, mm-hmm, yeah. I mean, you know, in reality, I have to ask the question, Brian, where is that money really going? Watch this. Y'all watch this. Watch this. Is it going to a gold watch? A Mercedes Benz? A nice robe? I told you the church bought this. I didn't buy it. Or is it going towards the kingdom of God? Because let me tell you something. The work of this church goes far beyond the doors that are here. We've got to go out there and we've got to help other people. Yeah. I thank God for our pastor emeritus, who's president yeah. of the Interdenominational Ministerial yeah. Alliance, who keep people in their homes, yes, who help to feed the hungry, yes, who yes. visit those who are in prison. Because yes, it's beyond that. Yes, and we've got to be generous ourselves. Mm -hmm. I was tight on my money. Mm -hmm. And I talked to a young man on my job one day, mm -hmm. and he talked about his pride and give him back to his church. Mm -hmm. And he had a joy about it. Mm -hmm. I said, Queen, I said this. We was in the military. I said, now, he's a senior airman, and I'm a tech sergeant. Uh -huh. I know I make a little bit more than he does. Uh -huh. But he's cheerfully giving. Mm -hmm. And I told my wife, we're going to start doing that. Well. We started giving. And before that, I was giving like that. We were searching for a house. Well. 
We just couldn't get it. Doors weren't opening. It was too expensive. But when I started being faithful to the Lord, when I started bringing my offering with my heart, not because somebody was telling me to, but because of my heart, all of a sudden, we walked into this house and I said, glory, glory, hallelujah. God made it easy to be able to go there and we've never been burdened. And I'm telling somebody here, give like God gave. Make a difference in the life of somebody else. See, I, I, I listen to Hunter and, and, and them same people, I see him. I saw this in his church one day, right here in his church. They were having choir practice. You remember that Sister Henderson and that man walked in his church talking about he needed gas somewhere. And I looked at his clothes, I was checking him out, he had some night boots on, man. Same thing like the Mercedes, right? I was skeptical. Can I be real with you? I'm from the city, I'm like, mm, yeah, all right. Guess what the members were not? They were not skeptical. I seen them seat and start pulling money out of their pocket. They blessed this brother, I was ready to tell them I needed gas. <laughs> Hallelujah! Hallelujah! What a generous church. And I'm going to say this right now. Everybody who gave on that day, God's going to bless you. God's going to bless you in the name of Jesus. So we got to continue to serve God. God is generous, and we need to be generous as well. And we got to win souls. That's what this is all about. I'm not sitting up here trying to look all nice and speak perfectly and so forth. I am burdened. I am, I'm, I'm like burdened for people who need Christ. I'm burdened for people who are just going through challenges unnecessarily as we sing in a song. That, that, you know, we got to trust God and we got to put it in God's hands. I don't know about any of you, but I, I mean, as much as those people stand on the corner who need a dollar or two, I just despise seeing that because of the nation that we live in. And I don't know about you, but I can't take another shooting. I, I, I just say that especially for our young brothers and sisters. I told this to my sister this morning. We've got to transform yeah. and get people back to believing in God. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. You know, I say this. I say this. I don't know if you listened to the news right. after the shooting in South Street last night. But the, 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 the reporter said something that blew my mind. The police, police officer said something that blew my mind. He said these young people are killing folks. Right where they got police officers just in the vicinity, right down the street. And they're still shooting people. And you know why? Because they're not scared to do it. They don't have no respect for law. And I told, I've told young people when I used to be a youth pastor, y'all get this loud and clear. I used to say this to these kids. You've got to reverence God. Because if you don't reverence God, then you'll lose respect for your parents. This is over 20 years ago I said this. And if you lose respect for your parents, you won't respect anybody. And that's what we're seeing. Young people are just carrying out the things that they're doing because they don't even think God is real. And, it can, and I don't even know how they could do it. But can look at their mother or their father and call them some name that you just call somebody off the street. Don't that make you want to rise up? Don't that make you want to do something? Yeah. Let me calm down. Because <laughs> I go in them elementary schools and I tell you what to do. I tell you what to do. And you might call it old school or whatever you want to call it. It works. It works. Our, our boys especially. Our young men need discipline they need discipline anybody in here who know you was in the military you know you needed discipline you had to learn how to stand up right march right listen to orders do what they were telling you to do and look 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 when you showed up back in your neighborhood in your blue uniform with your bus driver hat <laughs> and your friends was like yo what's going on with you and I was walking, I was walking different. You know, I used to walk with my little, you know, Philly walk. Now all of a sudden I'm like, one, right, right, left. They was like, yo, man, you still from the hood? What's wrong with you? 
And the thing is, is that that discipline changed me. And let me tell you something. That same discipline was used in my house. And that same discipline was used when I was a little boy. I was scared of my mother, even though she loved me to death. They talking about police gonna come to the school if you keep acting up. I could care less about police. What I was concerned about was a four foot eight inch woman named Dorothy Maytrotta. And when that woman showed up, then there was trouble. And my brothers and sisters, we gotta get back to that type of community responsibility. So we gotta make disciples. We gotta bring these young people in. And we gotta let them come in as they are. Stop expecting them to be shining stars with everything right. Go back in time, look in the mirror at yourself. You know you was far from perfect when you was young. When you was coming to church, some of us in here was working on a lot of stuff when we first came here. So we got to make disciples. We got to bring people to Jesus. That's the burden that we all have. I want somebody to know that you ain't going nowhere till God calls you after you've done everything you're supposed to do. Now, I'm getting close to my time. Look, I, I remember the life of Dr. King. Y'all know I'm really into the speeches and everything. But let me tell you something. He's an exact, exact example of this. When he was 12 years old, he tried to commit suicide. He heard his grandmother had a heart attack and died when he was supposed to be home with her, but he was being disobedient and left the house and went down to look at a parade. And when he came back and found out that she was dead, he took fault for it. So he went up on the second floor and jumped out the window. Did he die? God had work. He wasn't through. When he, was, when he was just a young man, uh-huh. signing a book in Harlem, New York, uh-huh. some woman walked up to him and asked him his name and yeah. plunged a, uh-huh. na- a letter opener into his chest, yeah. right near his heart. Yeah, he said if he would have sneezed, he would have died. Uh-huh. But did he die? No, because no. God had work for him to do. And even when he went through all those marches throughout the different places and all the hostility and the viciousness, uh-huh throwing stones at him and everything. None of that killed Dr. King. But it wasn't until he had reached where God expected him to be. And he said that on the night before he was assassinated. He said, I, like anybody, I want to live a long life. Longevity has its place. Then he said, this stuff is so profound and so prophetic, but I'm not concerned about that now. I just want to do God's will. And the thing is, God had let him go up to what he said was the mountain and see the promise. I done seen it. I know what it's like. So if I die tomorrow, it don't make no difference. I've done what God called me to do. And the next day, God took him. And it doesn't matter the way that God takes you. You're going to go where God destined for you. Think about Jesus. Same thing. They beat him. They crucified him. Uh And you know, that's why when they had him on the cross Uh and they hung him high and stretched him wide, Uh and then when they took his life, Uh they were celebrating in hell. Uh They said, we got him, the devils thought they thought. Uh They were celebrating in Golgotha Uh because those who hated him thought that they took his life. Uh But I like the way that God says it in John 10, 17 through 18. No man could take his life. He says in John 10, 17 through 18, the reason my father loves me is that I laid down my life only to take it up again. No one takes me, takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up. This command received from my father. That's why it was a false celebration because you couldn't take Jesus' life And he knew it. He knew that until his work was done, then he could say, my work is finished. Into your hands I commend my spirit. And I was saying that same thing. After I had my operation. You know, I was just, I I ain't going to lie to you. I was fearful. 
You can tell me the Bible says God has given us a spirit of fear. I have fear. I didn't know what was going to happen to me. Whenever they put you under sedation, you don't know if you're going to wake up. And then they take your heart and do what they did to me and put breathing tubes in me. I didn't know what was going to happen, but I had to trust God. And when I opened my eyes, after that surgery, I said, thank you, Lord. There's God's not through. There's still some more work to do. Hallelujah. And that's somebody's testimony out there. I want you to know today, brothers and sisters, cancer doesn't control your life. COVID-19 doesn't determine that day. Mass shootings doesn't determine that day. It is predestined that you do exactly what the will of God is. And then, once you've done all you're supposed to do here, then you can go to your heavenly mansion. You know, I was, I was at a funeral yesterday. Good man of God. 92 years old. And God took him home. I came up to read the scripture, Old Testament. And first thing I said was, I hope heaven's ready for him. Because this man is something else. And the blessing that I was making with that point is, this home right here on this earth, this is just a pass through. This is only temporary. I find myself now when I go to a funeral and I look at the casket and I see that individual, I said, that's not that person. That ain't nothing but the house that they lived in. Their soul, if they believed in Christ, is with Jesus Christ right now. Amen? And that's what we got to be excited about Christ. And we got to be excited to go there and live with him. For God, he wakes you up every day with a purpose. You know, I don't know about you, but this morning, for some reason, I woke up this morning. And I said, thank you, God, because I don't have any regulation over my heartbeat. Neither do you. You go to sleep at night. You sleep, and you, for seven hours, you, 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 you're doing what you do in your sleep. Who knows what that might be? My wife told me what I do in my sleep, snore. Some, some people know that. You know, you do it too. And you're going through these things. But let me tell you something. In a matter of one heartbeat, if you stop breathing and your heart stops beating during your sleep, you are gone. And so every day you wake up and you open up your eyes, first thing you need to say is thank you, Jesus, for another day. Don't take any day for granted, because until God is through, there's work to do. Amen? Come on, let's give God a hand clap of praise. We got a lot of work. Got a lot of work as a church. I think we have the power collectively to be able to transform people's lives. It's beautiful to see all of you guys in here. But I'm expecting a different kind of people to start walking in this church. People that are desperate. People that are tired. And people that need Christ. I know all of you need Christ. But there's a world out there of people who really need the Lord. And we got to go after them, church. We got to get them. So every head bowed and every eye closed. Father, we thank you, Lord. Thank you for letting us see another day. That means the mission still continues. And until you're done, God, we're going to continue to do what your will and your purpose is. I thank you, Lord, for people like Brother Gordon, who's getting ready to go into an operation. But God's going to bring you through that, brother. Because in my spirit, I know God ain't done. He's going to bring you through. He's going to bring you stronger. He's going to make it. Sister Cheatham, if you're listening, we know you're dealing with some sort of virus. We know you're dealing with the other illnesses. But you ain't going nowhere, sis, until God says it's time. And I say that to everybody in this church. Yeah, it was sad about what happened in Uvalde with those little babies. But I saw an awesome picture of them going up the stairs into the pearly gates. And God welcomed them to a place far greater than this world is. And so bless us, God, to realize that every day we're alive is to give you glory and do what you called us to do. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to do two things. I want to see if there's anybody here today who does not know the Lord as their Savior to open up the doors of the church. If you don't know Christ, 
as your Savior, the result will be, no matter how good you are, no matter how wonderful a person you are, if you leave here without a relationship with Jesus, you will not be accepted in heaven. So if there's anybody here who wants to give their life to the Lord today, you can do that. And second is we're going to open up the doors of this church to anyone who wants to become a member. Just a faithful member of this church to want to start their life going in the right direction. Under the guidance of me as pastor and this great church. And to do your will and your purpose. Will there be one? What's that, brother? Come on down, man. Come on down. Come on. Come on, sister. Come on, sister. It's so good to see my sister. Daisy Booker. She's been through a lot, but God is sustaining her. Amen. Amen. And I hope you heard that message today. You ain't going nowhere, sis, until God's done with you. You feel me? <laughs> Come here, young brother. This is Deshaun. I have more church with him through text messages than I can have with him through the church just to encourage him and to tell him you're doing fine son just keep your hand in God's hand you know one day one day Deshaun will share his testimony he's been through some stuff but I told him this just put your hand in God's hand hallelujah just keep your hand right there sis will bless you just like he did Hezekiah he said it's not over you still got work to do everything you've been through man everything you've been through you shared with me yourself you don't think you should still be here but guess what you are because God loves you and we love you too man so come close to me brothers and sisters how about putting your hands together for the newest members of Dover Christian Church? Hallelujah. You can do better than that. That's right, Seton. Come on, stand on your feet and welcome them. They're part of our family. Hallelujah. Anything that this church has, you can have it. We'll be praying for you. If you want to call, you can call at the midnight hour. And as the leaders of this church, we're here for you. So we thank you for choosing this church. We'll continue to be uh, those who develop your discipleship, mentorship, and all the things that you need to go forward. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, one more hand clap of praise for them. Go back to your seat. You can go back to your seats, all right? We'll talk, okay, sir? Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, it's time that we get ready to depart. I want to thank God for all of you. Love you very much. You mean the world to me. I love this church. I don't know about anybody else. You know, I, I love this church. <laughs> Ever since visiting you guys on Governor Avenue, you always been a loving people. Take that love that you share in this church out there to somebody who really needs love. Amen. Let us all stand on our feet. Go ahead, Brother Hunter, come and give us our charge. And then Elder, you're going to be with us. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. I remember when you did our men's retreat. You did that men's retreat. We said, yo, you're coming. And God saw fit. We're truly blessed. Here's our charge. And now, let us go out in the world in peace. Let us be of good courage and hold fast to what is good. Let us render no man evil for evil, but support the weak, help the afflicted, above all, love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Elder? We just like to remind you, all the men, all the men that are here today, 
uh, we are meet just a few minutes after with uh, Brother Cunningham in preparation for Father's Day. So please, all men. Now for those of you that are going to eat, I'll bless the food. Our Heavenly Father, we ask now, and I would bless the food that is now being prepared. And Lord, let it be used for the nourishment and the strengthening of our bodies. And now may the grace of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide, hence now and forevermore. Let the church say amen. Say it again. Thank you.